My name is Tim Johnson. Some of you might know me from my day job. I'm a professional cyclist. Most of the year I'm forced to be a leg shaving roadie, racing against a bunch of guys that spend their spare time comparing wattage and figuring out ways to be skinnier. I'm not into all that. I do try to be the best cyclist I can be, but without letting it take over my life. But it's what I have to do to pay the bills. My true love may seem sadistic to some. I like to let my hair grow out, ride in the cold, and if I'm lucky, it'll even rain in snow. You see, my true passion is racing cyclocross. I just came off a pretty good season. Let me take you through it. Okay, but first let me explain something. Yep, there are nine balls all over my kit. A lot of them. I wasn't sure about them at first either, but they kind of grew on me. Anyway, like I said, I had a pretty good year. By the time I made it to nationals, I was in good shape and the course conditions would be perfect for me. I also had a bit of luck on my side. But let's back up a bit. The road season just wrapped up with the Tour of Missouri, and the first big cross race of the season was coming up in Vegas during the Interbike Trade Show. This is the time of year I literally switch gears and go from road to cross. first part of the cross season, I'd rather go out and ride in the woods than stress about interval training. Riding technical single track is not the typical way most people train for cross racing. But I believe it increases my agility and helps me stay light on the bike when conditions are at their worst. Cross, we race in whatever conditions are thrown at us. This is going to be the first interbike for me that didn't include a stop at the Bermuda Grand Prix. I stayed home that week and tried to digest the big week of racing in Missouri, switching up six hours in the saddle to ripping on a cross bike in the woods. I was really looking forward to traveling with Lynn instead of in a van full of my knucklehead health net teammates. If you didn't know, Lynn, my wife, she's a badass cross racer. She's won almost every race out there, even if she says she still doesn't know how to race cross. We've had the perfect setup. Uh, both of us have been racing together uh, cross in the last couple years, and we have the same mechanics, to Thorn, and the same crew who follows us everywhere. For us, it's really the best situation because once the road season starts, we travel so much we don't see each other and then at least now we have to we have a chance to travel together and be together. Traveling with Lynn, Stu and Jeremy, it's always a good time. Stu Thorne is my wrench, my partner in crime and the owner of CycleCrossWorld.com. He's also a great friend and it seems like we've been at this forever. We're on the road together every weekend. Tim and I spend a lot of time during the week because he lives close by and, and Jeremy's not that far away. And, but when you get to the races, you gotta have, everything's gotta click. This year was a tough transition from road to cross. It was my first time with a major stage race at the end of the road season and so close to the first big cross race. My legs felt tired and heavy and my brain was still in the road tactics mode. Goals for me this year were pretty simple. Have fun, race at the front, try to win it if I had a shot. I had some serious self-esteem and image issues with the nine ball kit. 
endless questions about where it came from and why the hell I was wearing it. First time I suited up in the kit was by myself in a hotel room in Vegas. I stood in front of a mirror and wondered what the hell I was wearing. I got a little distracted by this one nine ball that was right over my junk. I knew I had to remove it. I dealt with it most of the day before I finally had to take action. There I was, sharpening over it in the parking lot minutes before the race. crazy and all of us were psyched to show off under the lights. It was a killer scene but it really wasn't much fun sprinting your ass off in thick wet grass for an hour. Trebone, my usual nemesis, won the race. Jeremy made the podium in third, and I finished a week ninth. Go figure. Maybe the nine balls are gonna make it a tough year for me. That hurts so bad. Oh. Makes me wish I did a cross race before this. Good race, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Heading into the start of the season, like any athlete I guess, I had some serious doubts about my abilities and wondered about my bad legs. I felt less than my best and wondered when I was going to start to come around. To make sure I still had some gas in the later parts of the season, I decided not to race some of the small races. The ones that weren't carrying UCI points or were far away from home. Of course, I'm happy now that it all worked out, but I had some serious doubts during that time. And then came the races in Gloucester, Mass. Gloucester's always been an important race for me because it's a big race, but also because it's put on by good friends of mine. It's got courses that are good for me and a bunch of UCI points. Plus, it's right near my hometown. It's kind of like having the world championships down the street. So. Oh yeah, the polka dot, my ball. Personally, it gave Lynn and I a chance to show off our new house, our new team lure Toyota Tundra that was going to be our home for the season. The setup we had in the cyclocrossworld.com compound was killer. I had my friends, my family, pretty much everything was looking good until the race started. I had kind of a bad start because um, I skipped a couple of gears right off the bat and I, I ended up pulling a foot out of the pedal. I was going, I think I was probably like seventh, eighth place, and then uh, going right through one of the tight corners, I rolled my rear tire, and right when it happened, I was pissed. I just can't believe this. And uh, I started jogging right away because there was so much, so many people, the traffic was so heavy. And then actually, somebody in the crowd was like, oh, just pop it back on, pop it back on. So I stopped and I put it back on, and went a little bit and realized that the other side of the tire was off too, so I had to put that back on. Dropped 25 spots, I don't know what it was, and I had to put it back on and then and then start going from there, and it just, 
put my head down and keep going. I was riding with an unglued rear tire, so I, I couldn't pedal hard and I couldn't brake hard at the rear, so I rode I rode with all my weight on the front wheel the, the entire way around the course back to the pit. When you're in a situation like that, it's not really, you can't rely on other people around you to, to pull you or to, to get a draft or anything, so it's really just time trialing back up, and I wanted to do as, you know, the fastest lap times I could. We had some mechanical trouble, and it was ultimately my fault. Um, and Tim, Tim, I felt bad for Tim, because I definitely made him work about 20 times harder than he really should have. You don't need a wheel? Stu and I practice pits all the time at home, and so for me to jump off the bike and grab the other one, it's it's super fast. say that I, I didn't wrestle with the fact that can I actually do this I mean it I wasn't sure if I could do it and I just had to I just had to tell my, myself to shut up and bring and put my head down and try and try and make it back as much as I could We've seen a lot of front runner runners give up at that point. You lost 35, 40 places. What in God's name made you keep going? This is Gloucester, man. How can I give up here? This is, uh, this is the greatest race that we have in New England. Great, great, great comeback. We'll be talking about this one for a long time. Tim Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Great job. He just got dealt a bad card, and he still played the hand really well, and he didn't freak out. I always say it's, it's how well you get up off the mats, and I think Tim gets off the mats better than any bike racer I've ever seen. There's one thing that dude can do, he can scrap, and you know, when the chips are down, he, he actually seems to shine even a little bit more. You know, when the, the courses are really gnarly, he, he can step it up a notch, and uh, when he has to fight, he can fight. And it, it, to see him come back, uh, it, it didn't surprise me a whole lot. After I rolled the tire on Saturday, I spent 45 minutes chasing at full speed to catch the leaders. It was disappointing that my full speed wasn't my normal full speed, but I finally made it back up to sixth place. I was still looking for that extra gear. Sunday's race didn't start out that well either. I hit the deck in the first lap in a stupid crash. Spent the rest of the race chasing at full speed, again. I had some of the legs I was looking for and almost got the win. 
but wound up second behind Jesse Anthony. I had some depth in my legs and was happy about the way I felt on the cross bike for the first time. It showed me that I could drill it for the full 60 minutes. I really didn't have my usual self-confidence until we went down to the Grenoble and Wissa Higgin races. Trading time at the front, racing hard and making sure that one of us would take the win. First for me, Grenogue, and second for me on Sunday. Not too bad. Things are finally starting to shape up. The U.S. Grand Prix Series kicked off in Louisville, Kentucky. Jeremy took a huge win on Saturday and after we tag teamed Turbone and Wicks. I got away from Ryan in the end for second. But winning on Sunday was probably one of my biggest wins against Ryan. Head to head, back and forth, a straight up victory and it felt awesome. The nine balls were starting to grow on me a little bit, and I could finally make it out the door for warm-up and training sessions without feeling too self-conscious. Apparently the jokes were starting to die down a little bit too. The grind of the season in the fight for the USGP point series was on. I had a couple strong finishes under my belt and felt like I had steady form. I was feeling pretty good. I started to believe that I still had my skills. I could go into a race confident that I could suffer at the front for the first 50 minutes and then take any opportunity I had to win. We went to the next USGP races in New Jersey. The week before, Champion Systems had gone ahead and made me a custom USGP leader skin suit with all my sponsors on it and even a few nine balls in there. And it looks sweet. On Saturday's race, I had to make up some time after a tough start. I had to get back to the front. But just as I was catching back on, I screwed up on a super slow, muddy corner. It was a mistake that I shouldn't have made. 15 seconds, been wiggling on the ground, just made it impossible to get back. I finished third behind the Twin Towers from Kona. Way to go, Timmy. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a series leader. Yes, we can! Yes, we can! Yes, we this morning knowing that this would be the day for him when he sees rain he sees gold tim johnson right now going to the front
placed number two on Sunday. I was second behind Ryan. With the storm brewing and rain coming, I was confident that I could give him a run for his money. But I was really surprised at how Ryan handled the mud. I'm usually able to narrow the power gap between us with my handling skills, but I was shocked. He just, he nailed it. And I lost the jersey. brutal to lose the lead in a series like the GPs. Having the white leader's jersey is really an honor and it's tough to watch somebody else take it home. It's Ryan Jamal Mandel being a series leader. U.S. Grand Prix Cyclocross, your defending champion of the series, is back in that jersey. I had a couple weekends off to go home and figure out how to get the jersey back. Lynn was away at a World Cup in Belgium, leaving me at home alone with nothing but time to think about the last part of the season. Sometimes being alone really helps me to focus and prepare for what's next. The last race of the series was in Portland, Oregon. Portland's big for me. The year before I won the final race of the USGP, but finished second overall leading into the national championships. The weather is always a factor and Ryan was quoted in an online story as claiming wins for both races and the series overall. I don't blame him. The way he'd been riding definitely gave him lots of confidence. But for me, I try not to race against people in the press and to save some of that juice for race days. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for lifting any pressure off me. So get ready for a pretty big storm moving in tomorrow with some very windy and gusty conditions, especially along the coast. We get to Portland and it was pissing rain as usual and really cold. It was the biggest storm in 20 years and it was perfect. Portland's known for having the most passionate and craziest fans in the U.S. circuit, and the weather never keeps them away. Sui. Sui. Yeah. You gotta loosen up the brake. Loosen it up. Sure. And add a couple PSI. Sure. Check it first, but tell me what it is. It just feels a bit, a little a bit soft. low. They're calling us up. Huh? Yeah. Call us up. Leave here to stage. Uh, Scroll down here, Tim. Find us. Where's my other bike? Hey, hang up. <laughs> there it is. I switch. It's go time. That one's all set. Rider number two today, out of Cannondale, Lear Cyclocross World. Please welcome four-time national champion, first American to ever be on the podium of a world championship, Tim Johnson.
what I can remember, all kind of a blur, actually, which is definitely a sign of a good race. I definitely don't remember races very precisely or clearly as some people do. Like, some people can recite every lap, every turn, every uphill, every time they slipped, every time they fell, whatever. I remember banging shoulders with Jeremy and Adam Craig in the first lap, but after that I was just kind of, I don't really remember very much. Good job. Oh, go! After a huge win for me on Saturday, I regained the lead in the USGP with only one race to go. I almost won the series right there, but Todd Wells missed second place by a few feet in the sprint with Ryan. The crazy part was, as I was packing my bags for the trip, I purposely left my custom leader skin suit at home so I wouldn't jinx myself in the fight to get it back. I doubted whether or not I could do it. And then, I wish I had it back. Song is here with a look at that first live local forecast. Sophie, good morning to you. Good morning, you guys. It's been a crazy start for our December, and today, the weather continues. We're talking about a lot of wind and a lot of rain. A blustery day for us pretty much all throughout the state. Even the point's really convoluted, and I don't... I know the basics, but... I, I really can't spend too much energy worrying about whether or not the points are going to work out in my favor. The only thing that I can do is have is have the best race I can, and hopefully, hopefully I beat him, and hopefully I win the series. And that's that's pretty much it. That's a simple that's a simple take on it. So day two is a winner take all between me and Ryan. It was still nasty outside, but the course had changed. It was thicker mud and harder to pedal through, making pure power a bigger asset than the slip and slide style of Saturday.
It's all looks silly out there, winning by a huge margin. I had an okay race for second, riding really well and battling with Jeff Kubush and Todd Wells, but it didn't matter because we watched Ryan take the leader's jersey back and claim the series title. That gave me second overall in the series, again. You know, the jersey's gonna go on somebody else's shoulders at some point. And it's, it's certainly nice to have it, but it's not the be-all, end-all. He was bummed again because he got second again to the series for, I think, the third, row, third year in a row. Um, but, you know, it was, he was ready to probably get a revenge at Nationals, and he, that's how he, he, he left Portland. And the series meant so much, and it sort of set the table for Nationals, and Nationals still remains the, sort of the, the grand dame of, of, uh, of U.S. cyclocross. It's the one we're shooting for all year at this point. And the USGP series, yeah, he was the first loser, but he's done really well in it and it's just time to move on. And it's the USGP and the Nationals are the most important race of the year. So I lost the USGP, but there's still a bigger title up for grabs. The U.S. National Championships in Kansas City. One day, one race, and one national champion. The last time the Nationals were in KC, back in 2000, I actually won it and I was looking forward to going back. The course was covered in snow and ice with mud underneath it, stormy and very cold. It snowed five inches on Thursday and Friday, but luckily I flew out a day early to beat any storms. Jeremy and I rode the course a bunch on Saturday and conditions were all over the map. Fast and icy, some slow spots, and super sketchy. Tire selection was going to be crucial for the race. I tested the Pipistrellas and the high speed ruts against my usual Typhoon Dugasts. The slicks don't have much traction, but it made it easier to at least head in one direction. Riding those ruts is like riding over frozen corduroy. It's really hard to keep it straight. No crashes, but plenty of almost made it fun and showed how sketchy the course really was. Thank you. I was able to see how much trouble Ryan and Barry were having, so I thought Paige and Wells would be the guys to watch for Sunday. I like a little jump, but I was thinking more like... Yo, what's good? Yeah! It's been like three months already. I can't take this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did it my hair for Europe. What do you think? This is pretty pro, right? I dyed the front of it, and then we got it going in the back. You and the Czech guys will fit in perfectly together. Here's our sweet olive loaf for uh, breakfast. Sure. We're going in Greek. Oh my god, can I get the okay, you got the keys in the car? Yep. The S You have a room key? Are you gonna open this or 22? Hold on man, there's only so many hands. Heads up. <laughs> For what? <laughs> 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 
sorry. Sorry about that. Pardon me. These Subarus, they handle great, you know? They're very, very stable. Always something, you know, and they turn it's left. The all-wheel drive is so, it's just so what? unique. What? The way that it handles just makes it really impressive. The scent, the scent coming from the... It's not, it's not quite that new car smell. It's, it's not that new car smell. It's more like burnt transmission. Well, there are 1,400 miles in this thing, so you'd expect it to feel kind of used I feel up. like when they said the break-in period, this wasn't what they were talking about. Race day prep went really well. How you doing, man? Good. You're going to win today, you know what? I, I'll try. It's your course. What are you doing? What's up, Stewie? Where's the car? We'll play? Yeah. Before the race, I took off alone and cut across to a different section of the course to watch the women's race. It reinforced my idea that just staying upright would pay off more in the long run than drilling it from the start. Uh, those file treads are not going to work. No? What do you want to run? Try some rhinos? Powers is on rhinos right now. Yeah. There's just not enough traction. And the ruts are like rounding. I know, I know it's that over there. So it's where not. That girl went off the course where you, she went off right in front of you. Oh, right yeah, over yeah, there. yeah. The line's way to the left, but yeah. you got stuck behind it. And it was just. Rough. Yeah. I rode Syriums with mud tires, and they're so much better. Yeah, let me, awesome. let me try them. Yeah. Up until 45 minutes ago, Stu and I were going back and forth in tire selection. The Pivastrellas, if I lose it, I can't save it. I can't come back. You know, like once you lose it, they don't, yeah, they don't come back. Yeah. So those things, I'm going to be able to risk a little bit more, and I'll be able to hold it up. And now, we will bring the top riders in America to the line. Moving up when I could, but Paige and Wells were off the front already. I was back a bit, but riding within myself and trying to keep mistakes to a minimum. Bike handling was playing such a big party slap that I finally shed my winter gloves that I felt were robbing me of a little extra control. Page and Wells with four laps to go. Page up there right away, gapping me but dropping Wells.
Johnson. Here comes Johnson. What a ride from Tim today. Johnson looking amazingly smooth right now. With three to go, I finally caught Paige and attacked. Two to go, Paige and I were alone in the front, battling for the lead. In a lap and a half to go, I drilled it into and through the sketchiest part of the course. Paige made a mistake behind me and crashed. That was it, it gave me my chance. The gap maxed out at eight seconds with a lap to go. throttle wide open with my head down and suffering like hell through the bell lap on my limit the entire time. Go, TJ! Well, congratulations to Tim Johnson, the Cannondale Leader Cyclocross World.com rider. Oh man, I'm so glad that's over. Those last few laps are so hard. Jonathan was just coming and coming and coming. And, oh, that course was just getting worse every single minute, just deteriorating the whole day. I'm so glad it's over. That was the most stressful I've been at a bike race in a long time. I know I said all that shit about not being stressed in Portland and you know, blah, 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 it's not that bad. But I had 500 people tell me that today was my day and it was gonna be my chance to, my chance to win, <clears throat> win, but it was tough. Has this sunk in yet, what, this, what happened today? You know, it, it did on the, it did when I got home and I started changing and I, you know, it's the same shit at every race. Your legs are burning still because you put the imprecation on earlier and Jeremy's in here packing up to leave and I, it was just like any other race, but then, you know, it, it slowly did a little bit. So now I have all my boys waiting for me down at the bar to give me a toast. Jeremy hooked this up with a little bottle of Chris Cook's champagne. Hey, look at this. Shoot, man, you got the trucker hat. Oh, Jesus. I do. You want a beer? Oh, really. Whoa! You're buying. Uh, Jeremy bought this. Did he really? He bought yeah, it? Really? Where did he get it? I don't know. Oh, I he know really sprung. Yeah. He really sprung with the good stuff. Whoa! It's like, whoa! <laughs> but hey, to, uh, to everybody, everybody involved. Good job, bro. Thanks very much. And uh, Jeremy, miss it, missing in action. Cheers to our national champion. Cheers to our national champion. <laughs>
doing cross because he had stopped doing only road. Um, and he had a really hard time in 2004 in Europe. So I think that whole thing made it up to, to that came up to that. And then that's why it was so emotional for him, I think, that when he won that. For Tim to win this season, when so many guys were so good, and the events were so good, and the races were so good, and you never knew who was a favorite, um, for him to win the Nationals was, I would say, arguably the best of all of his Nationals wins, um, because he had to beat a lot of really good guys. Yeah, I mean, there are certainly moments that we, you know, Tim had some bad days, I had bad days, we all have them. Uh, sure, if we could have thrown those out, then maybe it wouldn't have been so exciting either. He had a good year and we had a lot of good weekends. Um, sure, throw a few of them out, but overall, can't complain. There's a lot of guys that are hammers, and then there's guys that are nails, that can just take stuff. And Tim can win with flats and crashes and mishaps, and that's kind of what makes him exciting. Uh, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'd do it all over again in a heartbeat. I wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate.